Today we uh, will say, finish up with Moses and tell him goodbye. We're going to be in uh, Deuteronomy 34 and 33. Not in that order. <laughs> 33 and 34. <laughs> and we'll finish. We're going to see the final words of Moses. We'll visit his final resting place. And we'll hear the final tribute to Moses. And um, how do you write something after you're dead? Or does somebody else write it for you? Or does God dictate it to you to put down so that it will be written? I, that question still remains to be seen. So, um, if you'll flip your books open here to uh, page 33, chapter 33, page 299 in my Bible, we, <laughs> we, <laughs> We know, uh, we are very, we should be very familiar with Moses' life um, from the time he was a prince of Egypt. Let's not, never forget that. He was born, when he was born, he was brought to the, um, to the capital. He was Pharaoh's daughter's uh, son, was raised that way. So he went from the prince of Egypt to the shepherd on the back side of the wilderness. And most people would think that would be a demotion. Do you think it was a demotion? Or a promotion? Um, Training time. Training time. I think there was a time where of him living in the palace and having everything at his disposal was kind of like just losing everything and just being humble. The time of being humble. Yep. Time of being humbled, especially after he murdered a guy. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's remember that he he, he yeah. There, there's none of us that get out of this life being alive. sinless or alive. Yeah. So at any rate, so from Prince of Egypt to the to Shepherd on the backside of the wilderness. Um, Moses became very much of a shepherd leader, and that's, that's what God wants his leaders to be. He wants them to be shepherds. So from start to finish, we have mo followed Moses since his birth, and I've been thinking about that this morning. There's very few guys in the Bible that we follow from their birth all the way to when they die and beyond, except for Moses. We don't know what, we know what Moses was like when he was a baby, and what happened to him as a baby. We know what Yeshua, what it was like for Yeshua as a baby, and what happened, they, there was leaders, the world was trying to get rid of those, both of them, right? I think they're the only two guys that that happened to, that we, we followed their life all the way through. We don't know what happened to Moses when he was six and seven and eight and twelve. We just know he was being educated in the <coughs> courts of Pharaoh. And we don't know, we don't hear about, Mo, uh, about Yeshua after he comes back from Egypt until um, he was 12 and his, and his parents took him up to Jerusalem and they left and they thought he was with their crowd. Can you imagine what that must have been like for Joseph and Mary going, oh my gosh, we've lost the Messiah, you know? I mean, <laughs> 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 He's in big trouble. We That's cute. Burn, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, well, things happen. If you've ever lost, I've lost my, I lost my daughter at, at the beach, California, La Jolla, and it panicked me. I mean, I can't even begin to tell you how what that. Well, if you've ever lost your kid for a little bit, you know what that feels like. I found her. She was at the lifeguards station having an ice cream cone. She was fine. But that feeling of, oh, you know, oh, it's off. All right, so this is what we're going to be looking at today. Uh, um, um, kind of the outline, and this is on your, on your sheet, I think, um, how this kind of breaks down. It's lo it looks kind of mundane, but it won't be by the time we get done, I promise. Okay, so uh, just let me let me start off with the with this blessing. 
part, verses 1 through 5, is a blessing that uh, Moses is about to bestow upon Israel. Remember, the year is uh, to the nation. Now, this is the blessing which Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel. He said, The Lord came from Sinai and dawned on them from Seir. He shone forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints, and from his right hand came a fiery law for them. Yes, he loves the people, and all the saints are in your hand. They sit down at your feet. Everyone received your words. Moses commanded a law for us, a heritage of the congregation of Jacob, and he was king in uh, Yeshurun when the leaders of the people were gathered, all the tribes of Israel together in unity. There's two times in the Torah where all the children of Israel were together in unity. This is one. And actually this is referring to back at that time when they were all gathered together at the foot of Mount Sinai. It's only two mentions in the whole Torah when they were together A big deal with God. Okay? Only two mentions. At the time they were, they were there, and this one referring to then. Okay, so, and this is the blessing. We're with the, the man of God. That becomes a big phrase. Bless the children of Israel before his death. The man of God. That about this concept of a fiery law. From his right hand, a fiery law for them. And in the Hebrew, that word is ash dot. Ash dot. It literally, the right hand, it came from his right hand. We're going to talk about that just a little bit. So at Mount Sinai, there was, remember there was this great big fire on the mountain. Remember that we've seen pictures of Mount Sinai. It was black. Black today. It's burnt. There was fire on the mountain. God came down on that mountain and there was fire. And this whole concept of fire on the mountain, it comes from outside. It came down on the mountain. It came down to the people outside of man. This is where man and animals are very different. We talked about this before. Let me just reiterate. Give you an example. Swallows. We turn to Capistrano. Where does that knowledge come from? Did they get the memo? Did they get the email? Did they get the text message? No. It's born inside of them. It come, it's pre-printed on the inside of them. Imprinted. GPS system. Exactly. Boom. Today you go, they take off, we fly to Capistrano, so they get there, on, I think they get there on the same date every year, don't they? I don't even know where Capistrano is. California? California. I don't know where they come from. Anybody know where the swallows, they come from all over the country? I don't know. Anyway, South America? South America? Okay, I don't know. At any rate, they return to Capistrano, and that's all from an inborn thing. They know, they automatically know how to do that, kind of like your heart knows how to beat. They know, they know how to do that. How about eagle? Eagle, eagles. Eagle parents teach their baby how to fly. Remember, they take them up and they drop them off and... The dad has got to be strong enough to be able to go and catch that guy if he can't flap his wings yet. They know how to do that. That comes from inborn knowledge. Now, let's get to man. Man learns of Torah from the outside of himself. And he makes a decision whether to live by it or reject it. That's kind of one of the examples of we are people of choice. We have a choice whether to seek out after God and to follow Him or to live this whole life of ours in the flesh and not to be underneath His protection or His covenant. We have to make that decision. Oh my gosh, there is a... It's inborn in us to search for Him. But we can reject Him. You don't have to do this, you know. You don't have to. It's called free will. It's called free will. It's called choice, yes. It's called free will. Do you know how powerful that is? Do you know how powerful you are? On this planet, in this universe, in this creation, 
you have the power to say yes to God or to reject Him. That's very powerful. Okay. So, up oh, there's the there's the mountain. What have I got here? I can't remember. Uh, the saints came with ten thousands of saints. There must have been angels all around that mountain. Is all I can figure. There must have been angels like crazy all around this thing. Um, I have, did. I don't know if I wrote those down for you or not. But all of that place, all of those references up there in that little box, all make reference to the right hand of God. From His right hand came a fiery law for them. I'll give you an, a couple of examples. I have some, I've got a couple of examples. This is all from the book of Hebrews, the right hand. The sun is the radiance of God's glory. The sun is the radiance of God's glory. Think about that for a minute. And the exact representation of His being. The sun is the exact representation of God's being, sustaining all things by His powerful Word. Yeshua is the Word of God, right? We do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven. Hebrews 8.1 But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Hebrews 10.2 And fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of of the throne of God, Hebrews 12, 2. Just some examples of that fiery law being at the right hand. And I'll, I think I wrote it down on the paper, <clears throat> but just, you know, it'll probably come up again later, but I'm just impressed to say it now, so shut up and just say it. Um, <laughs> the, the right hand of God is an idiom. It's a Hebrew idiom, the right hand of God. Right hand of God. It literally means the power. Authority. authority, yes. It, it, that's what it is. Yeshua is the authority of God. He just happens to be the manifest. We can see Him. He came in a form that we could see Him. And we could relate to Him. And some people had the privilege of touching Him. We're going to have the privilege of touching Him one of these days. Can you imagine giving Jesus a hug? Or the thing I'm looking forward to is to be able to touch his scars. To touch those scars. I don't think I could do that. I don't think I could touch those scars. I think I could just look at them and I'm just going to fall into a puddle of tears. I mean, you did that for me? Wow. Wow. What Bible translation do you have? Uh, because the mind doesn't set fiery, um, fiery loss on them. Uh, mine says that in the uh, um, New King James. New King James. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Oh, NIV will change a lot of things. Yeah. Yep. Came the of the That's it. Oh, verse two. NIV, it reads easy and it's easy to understand, but unfortunately they've left like over a thousand verses out of the Bible. They just kind of ferreted it out. Yeah. The law that Moses gave us? Okay, all right. All right, so why, why must man learn of Torah from outside of himself? Why does it have to come from outside of himself? Because the Torah is the Word of God, number one. The Word of God is Spirit. The Spirit of God left man in the garden. I don't mean he left him in the garden, but he left, he left him. He left the man. The spirit of after man sinned, the spirit that he infused upon him, he blew and in, he blew into the nostrils of man, the neshama, and man became this living being. Man was flesh and he was spirit. But after he sinned, the spirit left him. 
And that's what those first 4,000 years were about. Returning the Spirit of God to live, dwell in the inside of man. If we can get that, if you can just get that one concept, you will have 75% of the Bible figured out. I don't know where that number came from, but anyway, I just made that up. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to you. The story in the Bible is about returning the Spirit of God to man, to dwell with Him. There's that fiery law. So, uh, and God begins again with Abraham. With Abraham. He, this is the short, short, short tale of this here. God began with Abraham. He gave his word to his called out nation called Israel. Right? God gave, and God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for all of us. And God returned his spirit to dwell with mankind as a result of the birth and resurrection of Yeshua. The word I think of Pentecost. is uh, restoration. He restored it. Yeah. He restored that he restored that that spirit. Cuz and that's all God ever wanted to do was to dwell with man from the garden from Adam. He wanted to walk with Adam in the cool of the day. Adam. Adam, hey, where are you? What are you doing hiding behind a fig leaf? What's the matter? Who told you you were naked? The ground was cursed. I want you to hear this. He wants you to hear this. In the garden, the ground was cursed. Man wasn't cursed. The ground was cursed because of what he did. But man couldn't live in that garden anymore. He's outside. Okay. The, right. Yes, sir. Here? Yes? Yeah, New King James. Yeah, yeah, New King James. Yep. Okay, so oh, here, here's the punchline of this slide. God returned his spirit to dwell with mankind as a result of the birth and resurrection of, of Yeshua. And he, this is, these are Yeshua, these are red words, that's why I put it in red. This is what you, you he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. It's when he met with the first group of disciples up in the Galilee after his resurrection. He said, Peace be unto you. And he breathed on them and he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Okay. So, verses 3 to 5. I want you to see this as a... I, I saw this this morning. I was so proud of myself because I saw it with my own eyes. I went, Oh, that's chiasm. Chiastic. Chiastic uh, pattern. So somebody read this for me, Steve, would you? Chiastic pattern. It states something and then it's going to restate it down here. And then it's going to state another thing and restate it down here in another way. And restate it and restate it and then the, the one in the middle is the, is the main point of the poem. Steve? Yes. He loves the people. All these things are in your hand. They sit down at your feet. Everyone receives your words. Moses commanded a law for us. A heritage of the congregation of Jacob. And he was king in Jerusalem when the leaders of the people were gathered, all the tribes of Israel together. Okay. Let's look at that from. There's my pointer. Let's just look how these, these phrases go together. Yes, he loves the people. Okay? All the tribes of Israel together. All his saints are in your hand. When the leaders of the people were gathered, they sit down at your feet, and he was king in Jerusalem. That's what, um, that's what people do. They sit down at the feet of the king. Your disciples sit at the feet of Yeshua. Everyone receives your words, a heritage of the congregation of Jacob. And here's the main point. Moses commanded a law for us. See how that works together? In Hebrew, if we spoke Hebrew, these things would rhyme and everything. Just to give you an idea of, of Hebrew poetry. It, look at your Bible. Are those words written a little differently? They're offset or inset or something like that? They're kind of... Are they set apart from the rest of the three to five? They are in, they are in yours? Yeah. That's Hebrew poetry. 
Okay, so um, but way back in Genesis, chapter 49, when Jacob gathered his sons together, and they were the actual 12 sons, and he gave them a, a um, he spoke words over them. They were mostly predictions of rebuke, actually, to those 12 sons. Okay, people, you'll hear sermons about the blessings that Jacob gave to his, his 12 sons. They weren't blessings, they were kind of predictive. This is what's going to happen to you guys in the latter days. Not, every, not all of them sounded exactly like a blessing, right? Okay. Jacob gives his predictive prophecy over his orders in birth order. This is the birth order. Okay. Um, that's not what Moses does. Moses gives his final blessing, and he is blessing them, to the people he has served for these 40 years before he dies in a different order. It's mostly a blessing. A couple of them aren't. But in, in, an, in a different order. Kind of along the order of how they're going to inherit the land. So if you flip your paper over on the very last page, you will have this very same map. And it's got kind of a key on it. So you can tell where the people... Can you see the key? There's a, the name of the tribe here, and it's got like a... What is it? An X or something? X. So you can see, and you can find it, match the emblem up. See where they're at. I love this map. Whoever did this map has got to be Dutch like me. <laughs> Gad. Somebody got dyslexic. Backwards. Right? Got it backwards. He wrote this down. He's probably Hebrew, actually. He, he wrote it down as, as Gad, and in English he translated it as Dag. <laughs> I just think I just thought that was funny. Dad got it. Dad got it. Dad got it. Yep. He wrote it right to left in English. Yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. All right. So. At any rate, let's, let's just take a look at these. Reuben and uh, Judah and Levi, and these are Leah's, these are the sons of Leah. And um, Steve, do you have your thing there? I now have the Good King James Version. Awesome. <laughs> Why don't you read for us? That's really good. <laughs> six through 11. Six through, no, just six through, step, six, six to seven. I'm sorry, six to, yeah, six through 11. Yeah, that's what I meant. Sure. Yep. <laughs> let Reuben live and not die, nor let his men be few. And this he said of Judah, Hear, boy, of Lord, the voice of Judah, and bring him to his people. Let his hands be sufficient for him, and may you be a help against the enemy. And of Levi he said, Let your thummen mm -hmm. and Tumum? your Urum mm -hmm. be with your holy one. Whom you tested at Massa, and with whom you contended at the waters of Meribah. And who says of his father and mother, I have not seen him, nor did he acknowledge his brothers, or know his own children, for they have observed your word and kept your covenant. They shall teach Jacob your judgment, Israel your law. They shall put incense before you, and a whole burnt sacrifice on your altar. Bless his substance, Lord, and accept the work of his hand. Strike the ones of those who rise against him and of those who hate him, that they rise not. Whoa. So, um... Let's just add a word to this last part that Steve just read. So Levi is going to be God's representative to the nation of Israel until, if you go back to Jacob's uh, blessing, till the one to whom it belongs comes, till Shiloh comes, the one to whom it belongs, which would be Yeshua. And after that, uh, the Levitical thing will, will pass away. Okay, so um, let's just take a look at this. Notice that the tribe that's missing is Simeon tribe that is missing is not mentioned here in any of these guys here. So Reuben, Judah, Levi, sons of Leah. Reuben is, the fir Reuben is indeed the firstborn. And um, Steve, in my New King James Bible, um, I'm just going to read that verse again. It is, um, let Reuben live and not die. That word nor, let his nor let his uh, number be few, nor let his men be few. That word nor is not, actually, it's in italics, which means it's not there. So let me read it, what the Hebrew actually says. Let Reuben live and not die. 
let his men be few. That's a whole different rendering of the verse, isn't it? What did what was Reuben's big what was Reuben's problem? He slept with his father's Wife. Yeah, all these guys committed all the sins of the Torah, which God said, no, don't do this stuff. So somebody did something. And he slept with his father's wife. He committed, not his, not, it wasn't his mother, but it was his, fa his mother's, his father's uh, concubine. Because he was trying to get back the, the, um, the birthright. And the birthright was not going to go to Reuben. So even though Reuben was one of the larger tribes to begin with, he winds up, let your men be few. Okay? Let your men be few. Uh, and Reuben winds up being a, one of the smaller tribes, eventually, eventually, eventually. One of the things I heard about that is if you wanted to have a position of authority as a man or a warrior at that point in time, you would take your opponent or your enemy's wife and sleep with her and by doing that you are defeating and declaring power over her husband in this case it was his you know father so that's what he was doing he was saying by doing this act i'm openly saying i am in a position of authority and i'm taking charge that's he's cool. doing a coup he was stealing it yes yeah he was he was trying to steal the whole thing right there out from underneath jacob and god had a different plan in mind did he not yep, yep. okay all right so let's see here all the way Reuben let Reuben live and let his men be few is what it actually says the tribe of Reuben never did excel as far as we know there they there never came a prophet a judge or a king from the tribe of Reuben okay and Reuben's going to live right over here. He's one of the three guys on the on the east side of the river. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at Judah. Judah, may you be a help. I was I was um, doing this slide up this week as the um, rockets were just raining in on Israel. Tuesday or Wednesday, I think it was. And it says, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. And I just made this a prayer. Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah, and bring him to his people. Let his hands be sufficient for him, and may you be a help against his enemies. I thought that was a perfect prayer today. All that stuff was going on. May his voice be heard. May his hands be sufficient. And that's what exactly what he has done with Israel since he has brought them back into the land in this last generation. Since the year I was born, 1948, he made a mistake. I was listening to a guy yesterday, and the clip expired, so I can't share it with you, but he was talking about, he said 20 years ago, we were serving the world falafel and shawarma. And he said, and now, now, he said, we can bring the president of India over here, and in 20 minutes I can hand him a, a glass of water that has just been ocean water 20 minutes before. The advances that they have made in the last 40 years have just been amazing. They are, at the, they are, they are so far ahead of the rest of the world, at the top of science and, and <coughs> probably the arts and entertainment and everything. They're an amazing people. May his voice be heard, and people are beginning to hear his um, hear them, and they're <laughs> and they're not messing with them anymore. Saudi Arabia. This guy said and he was a guy high up in the military. He said that Saudi Arabia has decided that they want to be a friend of Israel. <laughs> Don't figure, because they know they need them. They know they need them. Number one. Saudi Arabia is running out of oil. Number two, Israel has the most, they have trillions. Like I said, we, we have trillions of cubic feet of natural gas that has just been discovered in the last little bit. Their hands will be sufficient for them. I think also... The whole world is going to know who Judah is here pretty soon. Yes. One of the reasons that Saudi Arabia is wanting to make an alliance with Israel is because of Iran yes. and the threats 
that Iran has against Saudi Arabia because uh, Iran is one group like the Shiites, for example, and Saudi Arabia is the Wahhabis, so they're still fighting each other, but now they've got more advanced missiles and bigger threats. So they're like, okay, we're going to start being in alliance with Israel with protection. Yes, Israel. Go and figure. Israel's going to go ahead and be a protector of Saudi Arabia. Go and figure that. <laughs> Israel was holding its own, though. When the rockets were raining in, and they were... Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And I think I think when, when Israel went in there, I think they just flattened a good portion of Gaza. I mean, they had to. Probably much more than what we what is being let out yet, but they had to. Yeah, Vicky. Um, I just would like to interrupt the meeting just for a minute because uh, Bonnie just got a phone call that her grandson was in an accident in Denver, oh. and he's being taken to the hospital. And all that we know right now is that the car is totaled and he is alive. Oh. Hallelujah. So, Hallelujah. Can we just pray for him? Please right yeah. go ahead. Abba, Father. Be Bonnie, what's your friend? Cameron. Cameron, all right. Father God, we come before you and uh, ask that you send the angels of health and healing to uh, surround Cameron and uh, that your hand of comfort would be on his family. And, uh, <coughs> thank you, Father. God. You have us all in your hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I'm asking you that you raise Cameron up and you're, he is able to walk out of that hospital on his own um, on his own by this afternoon. He'll be checked out and he, he's going to be fine. Thank you, Lord, that your angels do and indeed, just as Vicki asked you, they, they do surround us and they do watch over us and they do prevent things, awful things from happening. And we praise you for that, Lord. We praise you for Cameron's life. And we know that uh, Bonnie's faith will be made strong today because you're holding her in the palm of your hand as well and her entire family. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we put our, our trust is in you and we're asking you to work a miracle because that's what you do. You are in the miracle working business. And uh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Yeshua. Thank you. All right. All right. All right, so back to uh, Judah. Moses knew that this destiny for the tribe of Judah from Jacob's prophecy, and that the scepter will not depart from Judah until the one to whom it belongs comes, until Shiloh comes. Okay, so um, now we got Levi, the other son of the third son of Leah. Uh, they shall teach Jacob your judgments and Israel your law. Levi is scattered. They don't have a land. E Levi is scattered uh, throughout all these cities. If I recall, there's three cities on each side of the river as far as uh, cities of refuge, not like San Francisco, but cities of refuge uh, and there were 40 some cities I think of the Levites scattered throughout the land if I recall. So Levites scattered throughout the nation to minister to the people and to bring uh, God's word to the whole nation. Levi is the one who's entrusted with the Uri Urim and the Thummim which means lights and lights and forget this word Something about glory or something. Anyway, the messages came through the the stones uh, on the on the tabernacle. I mean, on the on the vest of the um, of the high priest. Levi was confirmed in the care of the tabernacle. It, 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 that's his job. His job. He touched his. All, only Levites touched the stuff in carrying the uh, tabernacle from point to point as they traveled. His enemies would be smashed. Jealousy and spiritual opposition are enemies. Let me say that again. Jealousy and spiritual opposition are enemies. Okay, they're enemies. And this was a pronouncement that Levi would be free from this to render service uh, to God and to the nation. Nobody was to get jealous of a Levite. Did Moses and Aaron come from the tribe of Levi? Yes, absolutely. Yep. Yep. 
And uh, at that unfortunate golden calf incident, he said, who is on the Lord's side? Uh, uh, Moses did. And it was the Levites who jumped up and came, and they're the ones who went through and, and killed all the people that had been involved in that. There's, there's also a little tie-in that just came to my mind. Levi and another tribe, I think it was Levi and uh, Reuben, were the two sons that went into that town and slaughtered the Levi, no, it was Levi and Simeon. Okay, but Levi was one of the yeah. two brothers that went in there and did a slaughter. And then after the incident that you just said, after the golden calf, they went also in and slaughtered. Uh, they were not shy about cutting throats, let's just put it that way. So who, who better than to... Benjamin, yeah. yeah. <coughs> okay. That's, yeah, no, jealousy and, yeah, it was pronounced, but they were to be free of this to render the service to God and to the nation, okay? No one was to be, no one was, was to want to be um, a priest, otherwise, because the priest was going to be the, the leader of the nation, right? Okay, all right, 12 to 17, Steve, if you will. Um, let's, these are about Benjamin and Joseph, and these would be the sons of Rachel, Benjamin, he said, The love of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him, who shelters him all the day long, and he shall dwell with his shoulders. And of Joseph, he said, Blessed of the Lord is his land, with the precious thing of heaven to do, and the deep lying in, with the precious fruits of the sun, with the precious produce of the months, the best things the precious things of the everlasting earth, the precious things of the earth and its fullness, and the favor of him who dwelt in the bush, let the blessing come on the head of Joseph, and on the crown of the head of him who separate from his brothers. Uh, oh, his glory is like a firstborn bull, and his horns like the horns of the wild ox. Together with them, he shall push the people. They are ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are thousands of Manasseh. Okay. And we wonder why we have uh, Judah and Joseph here on our banners that um, flank both sides. You know. Judah is obviously the folks that are back in Israel. They were the ones in the camp that would always lead out. They were always the leaders in leading out. So, of course, they would be the first ones back. We're seeing blessings here on, on Ephraim and Manasseh. We wonder why America is such a big supporter of Israel and a big defender of Israel. Because in all the nations where God has sent all his people and spread them all where has he been regathering them at? Here in America. In the land of the free and the home of the brave. We, and we wonder why, you know, three, 240 years later, whatever, 300 years later, we are the big supporter and defender of Israel. That's why. Because we, are, we have an identity and an affinity to, to that land over there and to, the, and to these people. Blessing. The blessing. It's the blessing of the family rested on Joseph. He has the birthright blessing and it was divided between his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. But the scepter was the kingship. The Messiah was going to come through Judah. Okay, and it's just that simple. All these tribes are not necessarily... It's not that they're not equal. It's not that. It's that who has the responsibility for the overwatch of the family? Joseph. And the blessing that God... Gave to Abraham, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And since America has been a blessing, we have risen above all the other nations. And those who have been a curse to Israel, like uh, Pharaoh, Babylon, even Nazi Germany, look what happened to them. Yes, exactly. No, long, no longer do they exist. No longer do they exist. And that does not mean that America is any better is better than any other nation. It doesn't mean that. But it means that this is the melting pot where all the different nations are, are coming here. And they live here under this banner of freedom and, and become an American 
you know, with all of the the, re the responsibilities and the allegiances to the the founding documents that the forefathers gave us, because those were all based on the Torah, and that's who we are as a people. Yes, ma'am. Most people probably already know this, but we, we would be speaking Hebrew except for one. Yes. Person. Yeah. That's what the English won over Hebrew by one vote. And the reason that that happened was because they were so mad at the British. What other language can we speak besides English? You know, I mean that. It, and anyway, we're, so we speak English. And they did. They all spoke Hebrew and they knew Greek. And they went to college when they were twelve because they were that brilliant. You know, hello. <laughs> all right, let's see what this says. Honeycomb. Benjamin. Benjamin is the beloved of the Lord and of his father. He was the youngest, he was the youngest child of, um, of Jacob, right? He has special ble blessings of security. The tribe earned its high reputation for bravery and skill in war. They were very much warriors, Benjamin was. They almost got wiped out uh, eventually, but that's another story. And they live right, let's see, if I did this, I would have an arrow. Yes, they live right here. This is where Jerusalem is. That's also known as the Saddle of Benjamin, and it's a very strategic military position that you want to hold. Whoever has the Saddle of Benjamin has military control of that area. Yeah. The Saddle of Benjamin, I never heard that before. Nice, Saddle of Benjamin, I like that. Okay. Um. What we got going on here? That's cool. Okay, Joseph. Joseph, he's blessed of the Lord in his land. The two tribes of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh, they were indeed blessed numerically in Israel. Uh, this is the longest blessing of any of the tribes. It includes the land of Ephraim and Manasseh. This is Manasseh, and this is Manasseh, and this is Ephraim. And this is Benjamin. Look at this. Area-wise, this makes up <coughs> almost 50% of all the land, doesn't it? It's huge. It's huge. There's a reason for that. Joseph is referred to as the Nazir, or the branch, a Bikur, a firstborn, Bikur, 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 a firstborn, and as such he's entitled to the rights of the firstborn. He's responsible for the welfare of the family. That's why your tax dollars go to help Israel. We're responsible to the, to the family. And to the other nations. That's why there's so much help going out to the, that's why the United States provides so much help and international aid and so forth to the other nations, because we're we're it. You ever stop and think about that? We're the one. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? I don't know. Does to me anyway. Joseph will be blessed with military success. Is that not America? And England, for that matter? And these will be, uh, this will all, is all going to come through the sons of Ephraim and Manasseh. And there's big debate, is England Ephraim or is England Manasseh? And is America Ephraim or is America Manasseh? And it's back and forth, up and down, it doesn't matter. It, I, mean, I, I don't know, maybe it matters, but in the long run it doesn't matter. The fact is that uh, there's a firstborn blessing going on here. And not, not just a blessing, but the other hand of that is responsibility you know, for the other nations. That's why, that's why, that's why it matters what America does. It matters what we do. It matters that we lead. It matters. Under President Obama, he was leading from behind. He's just going, well, go, I don't know, just go, go on, right? He was wanting to bring America down so that we'd be equal with the rest of the nations. You can't lead that way. If we, if we followed Saul Alinsky's rules of rules of radicals. radicals, thank you, we would just, which is what they're trying to do, just overwhelm the system, overwhelm it, and then you can bring it down. Destroy. And you could destroy it, right? Yeah. Overwhelm it, bring it down. And that's exactly what they were intending to do. Yeah. Until somebody had a different idea. Until they used the trump card. Until they trumped the, yeah, until they trumped it. Until <laughs> they trumped it. 
Which is why I'm wearing red today. Huh? I would have never said that. Yes, you would. <laughs> yes, you would. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> okay. All right, 18 and 19, Issachar and Zebulun, and these also are, these are the last two sons of Leah, 18 and 19. And of Zebulun, he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, in your going out, and Issachar in your tents. They shall call the people to the mountain. There they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness, for they shall partake of the abundance of the sea and the treasures. Okay, what in the world does that mean? Wow. Okay, let's see. Here they are. Here and here. Not much sand, not much sea. There's oil up there. Yeah, I was going to say, under the sand, it might be natural <laughs> gas or oil. <laughs> it's the card Zebulun. They shall partake of the abundance of the seas and the sand. Moses is blessing them with wealth. These guys are going to be very wealthy um, tribes. Zebulun in seaside commerce and Issachar in uh, agriculture, at least. And it's been said, uh, as you follow Stephen Collins and some of these other guys that have followed where the tribes went um, throughout history, Zebulun wound, winds up over in, um, in Holland. Issachar, I can't remember where they wind up. But Issachar is also known as a man of the tents. He was a guy who loved to study Torah. So Zebulun went out, and he'd come back in, and Issachar would say, Wow, you should see what I found in the... T Look what I discovered in the Torah. So he was very much a man of, of study, or a tribe of studying the Torah. So take that for what it's worth. I don't know. Anyway, this is where they... Where they were up there by the Galilee, sort of, and then uh, now we're getting down to the uh, the last four, and these are all going to be the offspring of Zilpah and Bilhah. So Gad and Dan. Let's see what. Yeah, um, and of Gad, he said, yeah. Blessed is he who enlarges Gad, who dwells as a lion, and tears the arm and the crown. He provided the first part of himself. Because the lawgiver's portion was reserved for him. He came with the heads of the people, he administered the justice of the Lord and his judgments in Israel. And of Dan he said, Dan is a lion's wealth. He shall leap from Bashan. Sounds okay. like warriors. Yeah, they, boy, then they, and that's exactly a good description of them. So Gad dwells as a lion, and the other guy's going to be like the whelp of a lion, like the, a baby lion. But this, the lion character of the tribe of Gad was shown by the fact that Gad furnished many fine troops for David. And you'll find that in, in 1 Chronicles 12, 14. Okay? And Gad, so Gad's over here, There's the middle guy on the east side of the river. And he would, remember... Um, they had quite the discussion of when they built some kind of a uh, memorial in, this, in, the, in, this, in the river and Moses was kind of upset with them or Joshua was upset with them Moses was upset with them and he said no 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 well Joshua's going to be upset with them that we'll go over there we will commit to helping them take all the land even though they had this, their land over here they were all set their families were already living here in, in the book of Joshua these guys had already spread out and Joshua says, you guys got to come over here and help us, help the rest of the guys take these lands from the Canaanites. And, and Gad was absolutely, we're right there, we're right there with them. They were faithful, and they were good warriors, just like Paul said. Now, what about Dan? Dan gets a little squirrely. He's nimble and adventurous. Samson was from the tribe of Dan, and they moved. They decided they didn't like it. This is where they started out at, Dan. Down here, this is close to the Ga this is the Gaza Strip. They couldn't they couldn't defeat the Philistines that were living there, so they just decided, well, we like it better up here north. So they went up here. Okay, Dan's territory is now the northern border of Israel, right next to Syria. They will be a buffer if Syria ever were ever to come down. <coughs> They, they were the tribe that introduced idolatry to Israel in the book of Judges. Jeroboam set up one of his idolatrous golden calves in Dan. 
you know, the first one went so well, let's build a nut, let's build two more. I know, let's build two more. Let's try this again. We'll build one at Dan and one at Bethel. And um, became the uh, center of idol worship in Israel. It didn't turn out too well. Indeed, Jacob said of Dan in Genesis, Dan shall be a serpent by the way. Okay? So they... Um, uh, there was a, their symbol was a serpent and they didn't like that so much so they changed it to an eagle when they moved up here. Okay? They just kind of went, eh. I don't know. <laughs> just interesting. Okay, and let's find out about Naphtali and Asher. These are the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, respectively. And now, Naphtali said, O oh, Naphtali, satisfied with faith. Naphtali, he's full of blessings of the Lord. Naphtali was satisfied with favor. The tribe of Naphtali was indeed satisfied with favor. They were, they were, they were favored, and they were satisfied. It's the key portion near the Sea of Galilee. Who was that, who? Who spent their their uh, a good portion of their ministry time up here? Yeshua, right? Um, no wonder Moses said this tribe is full of the blessings of the Lord and Jacob said of Naphtali in Genesis 49 he gives goodly words. Yeshua's, most of Yeshua's words came from Naphtali up here. That's where Yeshua chose to make his, uh, his residence. That's every... When Christians go there, they just fall in love with the Galilee. That t turns out to be their favorite place. Is that true for you, Jeff? I, you know, it, it, we didn't spend a lot of time there, but I do remember it was really nice. Well, you're going to be we're three days up there this time. <laughs> it was my favorite. Galilee is beautiful. Gal yeah. There's a lot of fruit. And just the land is beautiful. And also, it's a nice place. Galilee is the old people. Way there. Yeah, it's beautiful. The yeah. The wine is really good. How's the whiskey? And Asher says, he's most blessed of the sons. Let him be favored by his brothers and let him dip his foot in oil. Your sandals shall be as bronze and your days shall be the strength. It was in their area that they had abundant olive oil, olive oil or orchards up here. And today, this is where the crude oil exploration is taking place, right up here off the shores of, of where Asher was. Happy are you, O Israel. He's already read that. Happy. Asher means happy, I think. Does Asher mean I think Asher means happy. Blessed, happy. Blessed, happy. Yeah. Happy are you, Israel. All those fall away. Okay, so here's my conclusion here of this. Um, picture this. Moses is passing through the tribes. It's not like a lot of times they'll have him pictured standing up on a mountain and saying goodbye to everybody. Or is he doing that or is he pa has, has them lined up and is he passing kind of through them as he's uh, making his ascent up to the mountain. He's passing through the tribes lined up on either side of the road and he begins to ascend the mountain where he is going to die and he's blessing the tribes as he's going up. I like that picture better. Mm -hmm. Talking. His final words to them is, here's, here's Moses' final words. There is none like unto God, O Jerusalem. This is the upright one. He, he's calling them to their highest place. 
who rides upon the heaven as your help and in his excellency on the skies the eternal God is a dwelling place and underneath are the everlasting arms how I would have gathered you together Jerusalem right under my wings um, that's really cool alright so now we're going to get to the final words of Moses and in 34 he climbs his last mountain God shows him all the land from there from the north to the west to the south and he saw it from Mount Nebo which is in modern day um, Israel I mean modern day uh, Jordan so Steve would you just just read the just read it 34 it's 12 verses and we'll talk about it this is very powerful then Moses went up from the plains of Moab, to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is across from Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead, as far as Dan, all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah, as far as the western sea, south, the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zohar. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land which I saw in Abraham. Isaac and Jacob say, I will give it to your descendants. I have caused you to see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over it. So, most the servants of the Lord died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Hor, but no one knows his grave to this day. Moses was a hundred and twenty years old when he died. His eyes were not thin of his natural vigor to finish. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses. Now, Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands on him. So the children of Israel hated him. And yet as the Lord had commanded Moses. But there has not arisen, but since then there has not arisen in Israel a prophet like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. In all the signs and wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt, before Pharaoh, before all his servants, all his land, and by all that might and power and all that great terror which Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. Okay. This is the land. There it is. Isn't that a powerful picture? He looked from the, to the north all the way down to the south to Zor, which is down by the Dead Sea. Jericho down below him all the way to the Mediterranean. Uh, Mount Nebo is in there. Oh, this is. is it just like this is Mount Nebo. Yeah. You can, this is the Mediterranean over here. Okay, so Moses dies according to the word of, of yod heh vav -Heh, and God buried him there in the valley in the land of Moab opposite, opposite Beth Peor and no one knows where his grave is to this day. Do you know why? Why wouldn't they know where great Moses' grave is today? Yeah, they probably would destroy it. Some would, and they didn't want him to. And the, they didn't. He didn't want them to idolize Moses. So he was 120 years old. That's old. Except his eyes weren't dim, and he, he was in perfect health. He was just done. He was done. His mission was over with. He was done, and he had been a good and faithful servant of God. And God had performed signs and wonders with great power and terror in the sight of all of Israel. Just think of what they've been through over the last 40 years. And I want you to remember this. Remember this phrase from verse 1? He was the man of God. Okay? Joshua in, in uh, Joshua 14.6 and King David in Psalm 91 both call Moses the man of God. And rightfully so. His life is the leader of Israel for 40 years. However, he was also a man. Remember we talked about how he murdered somebody? Okay. And God reminds him of this at the very end, th that he's just a man, not that he murdered somebody. When he was told by God that he would not enter the land of promise because he forgot to hallow God's name at Meribah. And he struck the, the rock twice instead of speaking to it, remember? He didn't represent God properly. 
so you're not going into the land, Moses. Now, the rabbi's view, Moses, uh, the rabbi's view of Moses is very high. He's very high in, in rabbinic literature. Well, and well, he should be. Okay, I'm not taking anything of that away. But we need to understand that the rabbinic uh, view, though it's very lofty, he uh, gives some ideas. He was cast into the river in a basket as man. Right? That's how they tried to get rid of him. And his mother tried to save him by putting him in a basket. He touched the river and it became blood as, as God. He was in, in, he was in a basket as a man. He touched the river and it turned to blood. It, only God could have done that. All right. He fled from Pharaoh as man. He, he ran away when he murdered somebody. But he drowned Pharaoh in the sea as God. That's how the rabbis look at this. And, and this help us, helps us understand our, the uh, comment in Hebrews chapter 3 when it says, One greater than Moses is referring to Yeshua, shall arise. One greater than Moses came. Okay, The rabbis hold Moses in, in high regard, and they should, and so, as so do we. He did these things. Only God could have done these things through him. But one Hebrews talks about one greater than a Moses than Moses arose. So let's look at this. Do you know? Do you know if the Jews are still looking to debate? Do they know that's the Messiah when when Moses was referring to one greater than me who will rise among you? Do they understand that that's referring to the Messiah? Well, they don't read Hebrews very often. Oh, a, uh, that was in the book of Hebrews. Yeah, they don't read. If they did, did Moses say that too? What? Yes, he, the prophet. Yeah, the, he was referring to the prophet. We'll get there. Just yeah, just a minute. So, in fact, we'll get there right now. Uh, and there arose not a prophet in, in thirty four ten. There arose not a prophet in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Moses knew God face to face. Remember, he met with him regularly, face to face, face to face. I think that was a pre incarnate Yeshua. If you. Anyway, so he was known as a prophet, a servant of the Lord, and the man of God. Okay? Um, prophet Moses. Yeshua was the prophet. Ha. When you put the article ha in, in Hebrew, the, the prophet, it means something. So he was here, he was a prophet. Here, he, Yeshua is the prophet. The people were amazed at the authority Messiah Yeshua had in his teaching when he explained the Torah of Moses to them. Okay, and he was doing that as the prophet the servant of the Lord over here with Moses he's teaching the children of Israel how to approach a holy God by the blood of bulls and goats over here the servant of the servant of the Lord he atoned for the sins of man with his own blood once and for all and then he sat down at the right hand of God okay talked about earlier the man of God, they call him the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. Over here, the man of God, he was called son of man and son of God, and he lived a sinless life. Moses can't claim that. Okay? All right. Here we go. Moses' final words. Never again, again, never again has there arisen a prophet like Moses who the Lord has known face to face. The word for prophet in Hebrew is Navi, and it has a twofold function. This is what prophets do. They speak the words of God regarding a generation. They're words of comfort, words of instruction, or words of rebuke. That's what a prophet does. Or two, the prophet spoke words regarding future events. Words of warning and words of encouragement. That's the purpose of a prophet. And Yeshua certainly functioned in, in both of those. Okay. So there you have it. The covenant. We're at the end of the book of Deuteronomy. There it is. It's the covenant. This is the book that every king had to write out his own copy. And he would keep it next to the Ark of the Covenant. Not in the Ark of the Covenant. Next to the Ark of the Covenant. So he could refer to it. Daily, if needed. <laughs> what was in the Ark of the Covenant? The rock. 
The rod of authority, manna, provision, huh? And the tablets, right? Right? Those are the three things in the in the ark. But on the outside of the ark was there was this copy of the covenant, the book of Deuteronomy. Okay. So this is the outline of how we are to live in the how they are to live in the land, to live in relationship with God and with one another. So I want you to think about this. The covenant is made up of words. Is that true? And words are made up of letters. You spell words with letters, right? Okay. These letters spell out how they are to approach God. We could even say this is the letter of the law. You've heard that phrase before, the letter of the law. But I ask you this question. What about the spirit of the law? This is where we can really mess things up. What is the meaning of the spirit of the law versus the letter of the law? In Matthew 20 to, 20, 20 to 44, Yeshua showed that obeying the letter of the law is a matter of physical action. You do this, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. Check, 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 right? Whereas obeying the spirit of the law requires more than just outward actions. It also involves an attitude of mind referred to by Paul as circumcision of the heart. It's a heart matter. The spirit of the law is, is your heart matter. And God is out to capture your heart. Not just that you keep a checklist of things. There's, here's an example. Yeshua said to refrain from adultery is obedience to the letter of the law. Okay, granted. But to obey both the spirit and the letter of the law, one must also exercise self-control. Galatians 5.23 not, not even to lust after someone committing adultery in his heart. Part of the fruit of the Spirit. Part of the fruit of the Spirit. Self-control. Yep. Here's another example. In keeping uh, the Sabbath day. To merely remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, as Exodus 20 verse 8 says, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as Hebrews 10.25 says, is in obedience to the letter of the law. But all, to also rejoice in the Sabbath and call it a delight, Isaiah 58, 13, is keeping the spirit of the law as God intends. This principle applies to all of God's laws. And I submit to you that's exactly what we did last night when we had our, our little community <coughs> dinner. That was keeping the spirit of the, of the Sabbath. That was fun. We delighted in it. It was awesome. All right, so... Here, here, here's my point of, of today's whole message, I guess, is coming up. Man needs the Spirit of God. We know from the prophets and the writings, try as we might, man cannot keep this covenant without the aid of the Spirit of God. We can't do it. History is full of that. Couldn't do it, couldn't do it, couldn't do it. The heart of man without the Spirit of God is deceitful and is very wicked. We see that playing out across the stage in our country today. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on earth and that every intent of his thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. This is way back talking about the days of uh, Noah. And Yeshua came to return the spirit to us. One of the most powerful events, the Song of Moses that we studied a couple weeks ago, it described what leaving the covenant would lead to, and it described perfectly what happened in the year 70 AD. So the return of the Spirit is what the last 2,000 years have been about. There's a difference between the hearts that belong to God and the hearts that do not. There's a real difference. Those are the two lines that we're standing in right now. Either Your heart either belongs to God or it doesn't. Either you can keep your heart under self-control and the rest of the fruits of the Spirit, joy and peace and love, and da -da -da, or not. Okay? There's a choice to be made. We, I love this. This is what he gave me this morning. This is, I love this. 
We can accept the Son of God as the Son of Man and be given His Spirit and be included in His new covenant or we can live life in our own flesh alone and the choice is yours. The Son of Man we can accept the Son of God the Son of God who was born as a man and who came to give return his return God's spirit back to us and he did that through the death burial and resurrection at Pentecost and we can be included in this new covenant that he's given to us that we can keep and we can memorialize his feast days and keep his calendar and so forth or we can choose to live it, live life in our own flesh with an uncircumcised heart and you're on your own and good luck but regardless the choice is ours or yours and uh, hopefully we can continue to uh, um, renew and confirm this choice and I think that's all I've got oh no just a minute <laughs> there's one more Damn. there's Shazam there's one more that's why there was a blank up there the spread of the good news that Yeshua returned the spirit to the God of man that man can give his wicked heart to God that man can love God and his fellow man and do good deeds and that man can bring forth and do wonderful things from the earth the earth still belongs to God and once again the choice is ours now I'm going to play for you a song that I found one more just you don't have to do anything just sit there and listen to it it's really cool and I would watch doesn't matter which one you watch because it's there's nobody singing on it it's just words but this I think you're gonna like this it's called so long Moses Does that make sense what I just said is there a comment or a question or anything okay you yeah, have a comment please please do I just wrote this down that the son of God became the son of man yep but the sons of man become the sons of God. That's perfect. Thank you. Wish I'd have thought of that. Right. right. Say that again for the just so it's on the on the tape. The Son of God became the Son of Man, so that the sons of man might become the sons of God. There you go. That's it. I'd write that in my Bible if I were you. That's good. I'm gonna turn off the microphone. You're, you can capture this on the thing if you want to, Joel.
servant. He was a, a man of God. He was a prophet, but he was nothing like what Yeshua was. Yeshua was the prophet. He was the uh, son of God. He became the son of man. And he was God's servant. And he did what Moses couldn't do. Moses couldn't take their sins away. He could only establish sacrifices and birth offerings. Yeshua, once and for all, forever. Hallelujah. That's what Moses was writing about all along. And uh, Lord, so we thank you. Thank you for bringing us to the end of another Torah cycle. We've been in this for three years, no more than three years. And it's taken to go through your Torah. And we thank you for it. And Lord, we ask you to guide us through again and teach us brand new things all over again because we never stop learning of you. And we never get enough of you. And we never know everything all about you. But Lord, we're here and we're, we want to be servants of you too. And we want to be representatives of you. And we want to believe you. We not only want to believe what you did for us, but we want to believe your words about us. And we want to be servants of the Most High God. Thank you for all you've done. And be with those who comfort our hearts and quiet our nerves and heal our bodies and touch our lives. And we ask this in Jesus.